All right, what's up? Matt Harmon here of Reception Perception, Yahoo Sports. So we are going through a very serious, fun, exciting exercise here today. Over at Yahoo, they tasked all of us podcast hosts, show hosts, writers, analysts, whatever, with coming up with a March Madness bracket for a big group. And you know I am a very serious college basketball expert. So what I'm going to do here today, I'm going to put my own little spin on this thing. If you're new here, by the way, appreciate you. Uh, subscribe to the channel, like the video, check out all the other content we have going on here all over the place. I'm actually not a March Madness or NCAA anything expert, okay? I got no, I got no idea what I'm doing here. So I decided I'm going to fill out a bracket this year my way, the reception perception way. I went through for every school in the tournament and picked out the best wide receiver because, hey, again, it's reception perception. That's what I do here. Picked out the best wide receiver to come out of that school. We're going to match them up every single game. We're going to pick the winner using the best wide receiver to come out of that school. So uh, there's going to be some interesting ones here. We're going to, uh, this is probably going to be the most accurate bracket of all time. The only rule here, well, I guess there's two rule. One, uh, I get to decide what, I get to decide who wins these things. Like this player is better than this player. This is my judgment. So, I mean, maybe you'll find a real take here along the way. Secondly, I have to remember actually watching that player play. So don't come at me in the comments about like, oh, what about this guy, you know, in 1985 that came out of this school? I wasn't alive then, okay? Wasn't alive. Didn't, didn't watch football then, obviously, because I wasn't born. Shoot, in the 90s, I probably don't even know some of those plays either. So they've got to be a player that I would have actually remembered watch. I would have remembered watching them play. So all right, with that being said, I'm pulling up my bracket here on Yahoo. You can create your own. I have the link down in the, the, the description about where you can create your own bracket here. And we're going to get this thing started. I've also got my list over here with the wide receiver that I picked to represent each school. Let's start off with Connecticut and Stetson. Uh, this one is easy here because this is how we're going to go through this thing. Stetson, no wide receivers in the NFL. Actually, Donald Parham, though, Chargers tight end. Did come out of there. That does not count. So our first one goes to Connecticut with Marcus Ely of the Buffalo Bills. Was drafted by the Bills. He had three catches for 71 yards and a touchdown in his NFL career. That is how we pick our first winner. Next one here, Florida Atlantic and Northwestern. So Florida Atlantic, we've got Lucky Whitehead, who is a kick returner for the Cowboys. Uh, he did have some offensive snaps here at different times in his career and Northwestern we've got Ben Skoranek of the Rams um this one's tough Ben Skoranek good blocker uh he's probably most famous for being the other white guy on the Rams that's not Cooper Cup who will sometimes catch a touchdown and irritate you you know with your fantasy teams and all that stuff so I think I'm gonna go because of the special teams versatility I'm gonna give this thing to Lucky Whitehead here so Florida Atlantic beats Northwestern. They move on to face Connecticut. Our next one here, San Diego State University and UAB. Okay, so San Diego State University. We've got Bryce Butler. He played for the Raiders, played for the Cowboys. Had, had some moments, I guess. He had some interesting times in his career. However, UAB got Roddy White of the Atlanta Falcons. This is going to be the best part of this stream, by the way. Is we're going to get to do some remember the dudes. Remember this guy? Remember this guy playing football? Uh, yeah, it's going to be some exciting stuff. So Roddy White, uh, I'm betting on him kind of going far here in this contest. He obviously wins this first round matchup. Next one up here, Auburn and Yale. So Yale, unfortunately, no wide receivers in the NFL. They are disqualified. They lose immediately to Devin Oroshimadu. Uh, mostly played for the Bears. That, I think he was originally drafted by the Colts. Mostly played for the Bears. 78 catches, 1,193 yards, and five touchdowns in his NFL career. Congratulations. We got a Bears wide receiver doing something exciting here. They win by default in the first round. Next one up here, BYU and Duquesne. That's how you say that, right? That's how you say it's school, I think. Anyways, uh, yeah, unfortunately, no wide receivers, I think, from Duquesne coming out of the NF coming into the NFL here. So, um, yeah, unfortunately, that is uh, an immediate disqualification for them. Well, let me let, let me check. You know what? Actually, let me make sure I got this right. Yeah, yeah. 
No, I, I think that we're going to go ahead and give this one in the first round here to Puka Nakua out of BYU. Yeah, that's right. Rookie year, and I already think he's the best. Yeah, no wide receivers coming out of Duquesne there in the NFL. So Puka Nakua, BYU, I mean, he beats out Austin Colley. Shout out to Austin Colley. I mean, give me a break. Yeah, Josh Norris, even Sammy Coates beats out Yale. I, I thought about I thought about Sammy Coates just to remind people just to remind people that the Pittsburgh Steelers do not always nail it with their wide receiver draft picks. That is the narrative that is actually kind of driving me crazy right now. I think I ranted about it on one of the shows recently. You go back in the Steelers draft history, they've really screwed up some wide receiver picks here. Uh, not, not even just back to the Sammy Coates era. You know, Chase Claypool on the record recently. Chase Claypool probably going to work his way out of the league here very soon. Anyways, that's enough about Steelers wide receivers. Let's get back to the serious business we have at hand here. Uh, all right, we've got Illinois and Moorhead State. So this one is going to go to Illinois and Brandon Lloyd. Oh, baby, Brandon Lloyd. I mean, that guy. Could you imagine if Twitter was a thing during the Brandon Lloyd era? That guy had some, like, serious, serious exciting uh, highlight plays. Obviously, no Moorhead State wide receivers in the NFL anyways. I like Brandon Lloyd. Oh, I don't know. That's going to be a tough matchup there in round two with Puka Nakua. We'll come back to that one. Next, we've got Washington State. Washington State, I picked for their best wide receiver, Marquise Wilson, Chicago Bears. I'm pretty sure if you go back and draft Twitter history, there were some Marquise Wilson bros. And maybe even like early Dynasty Twitter, there were some Marquise Wilson bros. Anyways, he had 56 catches, 777 yards, and three touchdowns in his NFL career. He is matching up against Drake here. Unfortunately, the only wide receiver that Drake has sent into the NFL was Doug Winslow, 1973. Uh, so that does not count because, uh, like I said at the top, the only real rule of this game is I have to actually have had – I had to watch you play. Uh, I never watched – Doug Winslow play in 1973. So this one is going to go to Marquise Wilson. Congratulations. All the Marquise Wilson bros from draft Twitter way back in the day. He finally won something here. Next one up, we've got Iowa State and South Dakota State. Okay, so South Dakota State, I've got Cade Johnson for the Seattle Seahawks <laughs> who had two catches for 21 yards in his NFL career. This is going to be a tough matchup. Iowa State. Uh, again, speaking of draft Twitter, I did not pick Hakeem Butler for this one. <laughs> We've actually got Alan Lazard from the New York Jets. Listen, you've seen the Alan Lazard reception perception profile. You know there's not a lot of good things to say there, but he can certainly beat out this guy with two catches for 21 yards. So, again, congratulations to Alan Lazard, Aaron Rodgers. Like, let's go, baby. We finally won something here. We're moving on to the next round. Let's go to the top over here. Uh, obviously, Longwood, no one represented. Shout out Longwood, but no one represented. So this one immediately goes to Houston and Tank Dell. We have two rookies, two rookies in this exercise already. How exciting. What a time to be alive. Next one up here, we've got Nebraska. Nebraska is represented by Quincy Inunua. Uh, again, talk about deep dynasty Twitter. There were definitely definitely some Quincy and Noonwood bros actually for the reception perception subscribers if you're a sicko subscriber there is Quincy and Noonwood data on the website that's why you're a sicko if you're subscribed to the, the the sicko package you can go check out a Quincy and Noonwood profile I think from like 2015 2016 something like that anyways he is our Nebraska representative uh unfortunately for Quincy he's going against Texas A&M which is Mike Evans so we are going to give this one to Mike Evans a Mike Evans Tank Dell matchup in the second round that is going to be extremely spicy okay let's move on to Wisconsin and JMU unfortunately James Madison I couldn't go Gary Clark here because of the rules Ishmael Hyman Ishmael Hyman is our representative here I I guess so Wisconsin our representative is Chris Chambers, bro. Chris Chambers was a straight baller. He definitely wins in our first round here. So absolutely, we are going with, uh, yeah, Chris Chambers, man. Dude, that guy was a stud. Okay, I had Chris Chambers on some fantasy teams. So all right, next one up here, we've got Duke and Jamison Crowder. Josh Norris, if you're still in the chat, I remember talking about Jamison Crowder as a draft prospect back in the day. That is how long we've been doing this, bro. So, oh my God, we need to get a life. All right, we got... Duke and Jamison Crowder in this round here against Vermont. Uh, yeah, no wide receivers in the NFL. So shout out to J 
James, uh, Jameson Crowder. We're moving on to the next round. Let's go Texas Tech and NC State. Texas Tech is interesting. Initially, I thought it was going to be uh, – I thought shoot, I thought it was going to be Michael Crabtree. You guys know if you're longtime Reception Perception fans, you know I really love me some Michael Crabtree. Thought he was extremely underrated. Boy, young boy, Diz. Oh, my God, Josh, give me a break. I thought uh, Michael Crabtree, his like later season in his career, pretty underrated. Really liked that guy. Um, all right, yeah, look at that. We've got the Quincy Nuno success rate versus man uh, in, in the chat. That's incredible. So I thought we were going Michael Crabtree here at Texas Tech. Got to give it to Wes Welker, though. So Wes Welker, pretty strong representative here against NC State. Ah, yeah, this one is going to be spicy here for NC State. We've got – oh, my gosh, where's my NC State representative here? Hang on, everybody. Hang on. Hang with me. Hang with me. Where's my NC State representative? Uh, okay, yeah. No no need to say it. No need to say it. We've, uh, we're going to go ahead and give this one to – uh, Wes Welker. Yeah, Wes Welker. We're moving on here. Shout out to Wes Welker. I mean, a total, uh, the original slot, bro. The original slot, bro. We got to go. Oh, Tory Holt, NC State. Never mind. Tory Holt, NC State. Oh, give me a break. Who's a better, who's a better player? Wes Welker or Tory Holt? I mean, I think we kind of got to go Tory Holt. Uh, oh, man, this is throwing off the algorithm already. Unbelievable stuff. This is throwing off the algorithm already. I think we're going to go. I mean, come on, man. He was a he's almost a damn Hall of Famer, right? What are we talking about here? We've got to go with Tory Holt. We got to go Tory Holt here in the first round. Never mind. Let me change this. We're going with Tory Holt in the first round. Let's go. Love to see it. Next one, we've got Kentucky and Oakland. Uh, okay, so Oakland, I believe, is disqualified. They, uh, you know, don't, I don't, think, don't even think they have a football team. So they're definitely disqualified. So Kentucky. We're going Randall Cobb, another Packers wide receiver. Unbelievable. We've got two of Aaron Rodgers' best friends <laughs> making it in this bracket, baby. You got to love to see that. That's a big timer. All right. Next up, we've got Florida. We've got Florida here. This has obviously got to be Percy Harvin. What an unbelievable uh, NFL player. What an unbelievable could have been story for Percy Harvin. But this is really it, man. This is where we've got to talk about. Um, shoot, we got to talk about Percy Harvin. Would have been unbelievable here. I did almost. Is this Colorado? Is this BSU slash Colorado? Yeah, I definitely looked at this for sure. Um, that that doesn't count, right? I mean, th no, Colorado is over here, right? What are we talking about? I don't know. Uh, whatever. Who cares? Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is this is Colorado, right? My my Colorado representative was Paul Richardson. So if we're if we're if we're giving this to, you know. Paul, you know, they won. I don't care. This doesn't have to be a real thing. Fine. I mean, I guess if they're moving on, whatever. It doesn't matter. This bracket, eh, thank you, Colin. Appreciate that. We'll, we'll move them on. I would have given it to Percy Harvin, but give me a break. Okay. Next one up, Marquette, Western Kentucky. I mean, shoot. Number one, Marquette doesn't have a football team. Josh Norris, if you're still here, Taylon Taylor, Western Kentucky. Come on down, baby. Western Kentucky. Taewon Taylor moving on to the next round. All right, let's go down to the West bracket. My God, this is going to take a long time. All right, let's move to the Western bracket here. We've got North Carolina against Wagner. Um, yeah, let me tell you what. I tried to do a lot of digging on old Wagner. No wide receivers in the NFL. We're going uh, North Carolina. We've got to go Hakeem Nix. Dude, if you guys don't remember Hakeem Nix, <laughs> you're missing out. That guy was pretty electric. Big time contested catch player. North Carolina moves on with Hakeem Nix. Next, we have Michigan State versus Mississippi State. So first of all, our Mississippi State representative is Eric Molds. Eric Molds is just pushing the rule of does Matt Harmon remember him playing? Uh, like I've just got some barely fringe memories of Eric Molds. But Plaxico Burris, our representative from Michigan State, you guys had no idea, no idea how much I wanted to just make this Jaden Reed, but I guess we'll give it to Plaxico Burris, you know, all things considered here. So going Plaxico uh, versus you know, Mississippi State here, I'm going to go, I, I think I'm going Michigan State and Plaxico Burris. I mean, I'm just, maybe I'm falling for the big X receiver archetype, man, but Plaxico was kind of a stud. So uh, we'll go Plaxico, State, uh, Plaxico Burris here from Michigan State. 
Next one up, we got St. Mary's versus Grand Canyon. Uh, here's the deal. St. Mary's was technically disqualified. Grand Canyon is technically disqualified. So uh, this one is a total toss-up. I'll just go with the higher seed here because technically there are no wide receivers involved in uh, in anything here. So, yeah, I, I definitely should have gone Jaden Reed for Michigan State, but alas, I did not. All right, next one up here. We got Alabama versus Charleston. Uh, well, first of all, Charleston does actually have a representative. Michael Strong from the Colts originally. He had a catch on Thursday Night Football with the Carolina Panthers and Frank Reich this past year. But Alabama, I mean, he's going against Julio Jones. Ever heard of him? Wide receiver prospect from Alabama. Crimson Tide, Julio Jones. Hall of Famer. Eagles legend. Yeah, Julio Jones, uh, and we're going to go ahead and just go ahead and click Alabama over St. Mary's, who's disqualified. So congratulations, you got two wins here in a row, Alabama, because of Julio Jones. Next one up, we've got Clemson and New Mexico. New Mexico uh, does have a representative here, Hank Basket. Remember Hank Basket? Mostly known for his reality TV exploits, but I believe he's also a special teamer with the Eagles uh, and the Colts. Anyways, he's our New Mexico representative. Unfortunately, our Clemson representative is DeAndre Hopkins. So this is an easy win for Clemson. DeAndre Hopkins takes this one. All right, Baylor versus Colgate, not the toothpaste. Colgate, no wide receivers in the NFL, so they are disqualified, which gives a round one win to Kendall Wright. Uh, sorry to the Corey Coleman bros, but unfortunately, it's Kendall Wright, a PPR maven. I mean, people probably think... What people think Deontay Johnson is, Kendall Wright actually was that guy for a moment there with the Tennessee Titans. So he is going to win this round over Colgate. Next one up, we've got Dayton. Dayton? D Dayton? I mean, me trying to just pronounce these schools is worth it for uh, itself. They got no wide receivers in the NFL, so they are disqualified, which brings us to Nevada. And uh, Nevada had some interesting candidates, could have gone with the Romeo Dobbs, but I ultimately settled on another slight throwback name here, Richard Matthews, who had a 900-yard season with the Tennessee Titans. I believe he scored nine touchdowns in a season once as well. Um, yeah, we are going to go ahead and give this one to Nevada. All right, Arizona and Long Beach State. As you might imagine, Long Beach State, no wide receivers in the NFL in recent memory. So this one goes to Arizona. And Arizona's representative is Mike Thomas of the Jacksonville Jaguars. He actually had a couple of stints, too, with the Bengals as a special teamer. 176 catches, 1,796 yards, and seven touchdowns in his NFL career. So Arizona wins this round. Next one, we go Purdue. Uh, Purdue, interesting here. A uh, couple of options could have gone with for Purdue. I mean, I'm juggling my screens here, people. Give me a moment. Purdue, I actually settled on Rondale Moore. It was kind of like Rondale Moore, David Bell. I hope I'm not forgetting anybody. If I am, again, you can yell at me uh, in the comments. Yeah, Rondale Moore is our uh, one here. I don't even know what this school is. Oh, the, no, this is Montana State. Right, Montana State. Montana State, uh, yeah, I'm I pretty sure. Yeah, Lance McCutcheon, actually, Rams preseason hero. Uh, for Montana State so we are going to give this one we're going to give this one to Purdue here and Rondale Moore yes I am going to post this when we finish so don't worry about that next one up we've got TCU and look TCU was a really difficult one to pick because we've got a lot of busts recently okay we got Jalen Rager we got Josh Doxson not a great situation there we got Quentin Johnson ultimately I just on the potential okay and I'm not like, don't come back to this post and say, see, you still believed in Quentin Johnston, because I, I really don't. But I ultimately let Quentin Johnston be the representative for the school here because there were no other really good TCU wide receivers in recent memory. Like, I'm not having Jalen Rager in this contest here, for God's sake. So Quentin Johnston is our representative from TCU. He is going against Utah State, and Utah State had Kevin Curtis of the Eagles. I definitely had I, – I definitely had – um a Kevin Curtis fantasy team, for God's sake. So, yeah, let's go ahead uh, and give this to Kevin Curtis. He's got to be better than Quentin Johnson. He had 1,000 yards. Quentin Johnson, uh, is he going to have a 1,000-yard season? Because Kevin Curtis did. So we're going to go with Kevin Curtis here uh, out of Utah State. Next one up, we've got Gonzaga. 
We've got Gonzaga here, and I'm pretty sure Gonzaga, no wide receivers in the NFL. But McNeese State, I mean, we've got Deontay Spencer. He is a player, a human being for the Denver Broncos. So I mean, we're going McNeese State, baby. There it is. Uh, I don't have a reception perception profile on um, – uh, on on Deontay Spencer, so there's that. All right, next one up here, we've got Kansas, who is represented by Steven Sims, played for the Steelers, little slot receiver for Washington. I definitely remember you people out there. There were people out there that wanted me to chart this guy for reception perception at one point. So he is a guy that's had some moments in the NFL. Montreal Washington, Broncos wide receiver. Um, I remember when I was charting the, the the draft class the year he came out that he kept, I think this was last year, he kept popping up as a guy that was playing a lot of snaps and not really doing anything. So we're going to give this to Kansas here. They beat Samford and Montreal Washington. Next one up here, South Carolina and Oregon. South Carolina obviously represented by Debo Samuel. Uh, and Josh Huff was the best Oregon wide receiver I could come up with. So uh, Troy Franklin, hope you beat that allegation here. Uh, that there are no good Oregon receivers because man, I, I went, I was, I was hoping there was going to be somebody better, like to pick here, um, and I was not able to find anyone. So alas, what can you do? We are going South Carolina and Debo Samuel, easy win. Next one up, we've got Crichton, no wide receivers in the NFL, and Akron, Dominique Hickson. You guys remember Dominique Hickson? He had two 500-yard seasons with the New York Giants. Believe an undrafted free agent. Uh, rather interesting player. He wins round one here. Next, we've got Texas and Colorado State. Colorado State, I will say, you guys know I was tempted to go with Rashard Higgins. The longtime RP bros know I was tempted to go with, uh, with, uh, with, with Rashard Higgins there. Was not able to do it. Got to give it to Michael Gallup here. Uh, another guy that I was rather high on in reception perception history prior to his ACL tear. Actually had some nice success rate versus man coverage scores. Michael uh, Gallup is going to go up against here for Texas. You know, kind of a disappointing history of wide receivers out of Texas. We'll see if we'll see if um, the two guys this year, Xavier Worthy and obviously uh, Ad Mitchell, are able to change that. We'll see if they can uh, mix this up. Currently, I'm only going the guys that have played in the NFL. So I don't know. Like chat, you tell me. I've got Roy Williams here. Remember Roy Williams? was traded to the Cowboys, played for the Lions. He had a 1,300-yard season. You tell me, Roy Williams uh, or Michael Gallup? I mean, I think it's probably Roy Williams. It's probably Roy Williams. You tell me if I'm wrong there. I'm open to changing that because you guys know I, I do love Michael Gallup. Yes, Cowboys legend Roy Williams. Uh, shout, out to, to, shout out to the Cowboys. Terrible trade there. I think I'll give it to Roy Williams over Michael Gallup. Lastly, Lastly, I mean, my God, Andrew, shout out to you. Looking up, literally looking up the success rates live uh, for some of these random receivers that I've charted. Yes, Richard Higgins, a guy that I really liked. St. Peter's is disqualified. They have no receivers uh, that came into the NFL. Um, I don't even think they have a football team. Yeah, I don't think they have a football team. Okay, anyway, so Tennessee, another school that was sneaky disappointing. I didn't go with Cordero Patterson because, like, he's not, he's not a receiver, okay? not a receiver. He's a kick returner. He is a, a running back. He's had most of his career success at running back. So he doesn't qualify for this exercise. Like Josh Palmer, honestly, if you look like I'll, I'll pull this up. If you look at the recent history for Tennessee wide receivers, it's not great. It's my guy, Justin Hunter. Uh, Andrew, you can look up the success rate <laughs> on Justin Hunter. You can go all the way to the bottom. Uh, that's where you're going to find Justin Hunter. So I don't think he counts. Otherwise, like recent names out of Tennessee, like I said, Cordero Patterson, uh, Marquez Callaway, Jalen Hyatt, Jawan Jennings. I mean, who's a better football player, Jawan Jennings or Josh Palmer? I mean, either way, they're moving on to the next round, but we got to consider this for round two against Roy Williams. Like Jawan Jennings, I would say is probably like, I think I'd rather have Jawan Jennings as my wide receiver three over Josh Palmer. Um, cause again, like otherwise we're talking about shoot Josh Malone. Remember him? Velas Jones, <laughs> Velas Jones, baby. All right. So we're going to give this one to Juwan Jennings, uh, Tennessee. We love to see it. All right. Back up to the top here. We got to move through this thing, Connecticut and Florida Atlantic. Remember Florida Atlantic was lucky whitehead. We're going to give, uh, this one to lucky whitehead 
over Marcus Easley, who only had three catches in the NFL. Next one, UAB and Auburn. Auburn, Devin Hiroshimadu, I'm sorry, but your magical run ends here because Roddy White is an easy winner with UAB. Uh, all right, BYU and Illinois. Here we have uh, Illinois. Who was Illinois' representative? Illinois was Brandon Lloyd and Puka Nakua. Ooh, a spicy one. I know Puka Nakua broke a rookie record, but, man, did you see some of those crazy Brandon Lloyd catches? No, for real. Got to give this one to Puka here. Pretty electric matchup for for, for this one, but I, I we're giving it to Puka. The guy's an absolute stud. We believe in Puka Nakua here at the Reception Perception YouTube channel. Okay, Washington State and Iowa State. Iowa State was Alan Lazard. Washington State was Marquise Wilson. I think we're giving this one to Alan Lazard simply because he fleeced the damn Jets out of $44 million. So we're going with Alan Lazard here. Texas A&M versus Houston here. Houston, Tank Dell, you put up a hell of a fight, but we're definitely giving this one to Mike Evans. I mean, come on, give me a break. Next, we've got Wisconsin and Duke. Wisconsin's representative was Chris, Chris Chambers against Jamison Crowder. Jamison Crowder is a nice little NFL player, but give me Chris Chambers' ceiling over that any day of the week. Next up, we got NC State and Torrey Holt versus Kentucky and Randall Cobb. Again, uh, you know, Kentucky, nice little run there. Nice little run there, but no, we're going to give this one to Torrey Holt here. Got to do it. Next one up, we've got uh, Colorado and Paul Rich Was that Paul Richards? Or no, Colorado, I don't even remember. They won, right? Yeah, right, right. That was the one. They, they've actually already won this game. Uh, Western Kentucky, Taewon Taylor versus Paul Richardson. <laughs> there, That feels like some real dynasty bro arguments there. Honestly, I'm going to give that one to Paul Richardson. Sorry, Josh Norris and your guy, Taewon Taylor, but we're giving this one. Uh, with pretty con pretty pretty strong conviction to Paul Richardson because if injuries weren't a thing, if God had turned injuries off, man, that would have been a pretty electric career for Paul Richardson. That guy could make some crazy catches despite being a small player. There's Paul Richardson data on receptionperception.com. Next, we've got Michigan State, a contentious one here, Plaxico, Bur Plaxico Burris versus Akeem Nix, two Giants legends. Dude, I don't care. I'm giving this one. To Hakeem Nix. I really, man, Hakeem Nix was good. I wish that Hakeem Nix had played more football during the reception perception era because I always really liked the way that guy played. Uh, he had that one crazy behind the back catch at UNC one time. Anyways, he's probably going to lose in the next round to uh, Julio Jones in Alabama here, but let's let him have his moment. Next, we got Kendall Wright and DeAndre Hopkins. Obviously, this one's going to DeAndre Hopkins here in Nevada and Arizona. Arizona's representative was. Mike Thomas, who was primarily a special teamer, and Nevada was Rashard Matthews. Again, Rashard Matthews had a 900-yard season in the NFL, so we're definitely going to give this one to Rashard Matthews here. That brings us back to Purdue and Utah State. Um, Utah State, interestingly, again, Kevin Curtis versus Rondale Moore. Uh, Rondale Moore doesn't even really play wide receiver, so we're going to give this one to Kevin Curtis, who had a 1,000-yard season in 2007 when he was on my fantasy team. So shout out to Kevin Curtis. He is our pick here. Next, we've got McNeese State and Kansas. Remember, uh, McNeese State's representative was Deontay Spencer, who we don't really know much about, and Steven Sims, uh, who was a little slot receiver for a moment in Washington. I think we got to go um, you know, with, with Steven Sims here. I, I, got nothing. I, I got nothing for you on Deontay Spencer, so we're going with Steven Sims here. Yeah, I, somebody brought up uh, Dante Stallworth in the chat for Tennessee. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. But whatever. Who cares? They're going to lose next round, maybe. I don't know. All right. Let's go to South Carolina and Akron. Obviously. I mean, come on. Easily going to give this one to uh, Debo Samuel over Dominique Hickson. Yeah, Debo Samuel is going to go pretty far in this one. All right. So Texas and Tennessee. Again, I could retroactively consider Dante Stallworth for Tennessee. Maybe I should. But right now, Jawan Jennings is the representative here. Uh, listen, I'm, I think I'm going to, again, give this one to Roy Williams. Like, Roy Williams, big receiver, 1,300 yards with the Lions when he was originally drafted there. We're going with Texas and Roy Williams on this one. All right, back up to the top of the bracket here. We've got Florida Atlantic and UAB. Obviously, this one is Roddy White, baby. Let's go. Roddy White. Shout out. I mean, he is making a hell of a run here. That brings us to uh, BYU. Uh, what do we got here? What do we got? Yeah, BYU and Iowa State. 
Okay. Obviously, Puka Nakua clears Alan Lazard. Give me a freaking break. Next one, Texas A&M. Mike Evans and Chris Chambers here. Uh, again, this is Mike Evans' music. He is our guy here. He is moving along. Let's go, Mike Evans. That brings us to Torrey Holt. I mean, shoot, Torrey Holt is making a run here. Torrey Holt versus Paul Richardson. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and go with Torrey Holt. All right, down here, again, we've got Hakeem Nix. Hell of a run for Hakeem Nix, but he goes up against Julio Jones here. I mean, my God, how can you not go with Julio Jones? Incredible matchup there. Next, we've got Nevada. Rashard Matthews. I mean, let's give it up for Rashard Matthews. He's de he definitely has some reception perception seasons logged on the website, but DeAndre Hopkins wins in this matchup. Next one over here, we've got Utah State versus Kansas. Who was Utah State's representative again? Kevin Curtis, bro, making a hell of a run. Kevin Curtis making it into uh, deep into this tournament, baby. I mean, my God, you got to love that. That's pretty electric over Steven Sims. Next, South Carolina, Roy Williams. He's pushed it along here, Roy Williams, but we're definitely going with Debo Samuel and South Carolina. So back up to the top here. We are almost through this thing. We've got Roddy White versus Puka Nakua. Oh, boy. Zach. Zach, what do we do? Chat, what do we do? Roddy White versus Puka Nakua. I mean, my God. Uh, Roddy White was really good, man. Roddy White was really good, but what are we doing here? What are we doing? Puka Nakua coming off the best rookie wide receiver, wide receiver season of all time. Was a pre-draft reception perception flag plant. Yeah, that's Zach, not me talking to myself, okay? I, this is a tough one, probably the toughest one so far, but we're clicking Puka Nakua. We're clicking Puka Nakua. That's how good his rookie season was. If we're moving it forward, we got to do it. We're going Puka. Really tough matchup here over in the South as well. We've got Mike Evans of Texas A&M versus Torrey Holt of NC State. Bro, Torrey Holt, I mean, look, great player. Maybe should be a Hall of Famer. I'm giving this one to Mike Evans. Accuse me. Accuse me of recent uh, recency bias. I don't care. Mike Evans, baby. It's happening. That brings us back down here. Julio Jones versus DeAndre Hopkins. Probably the toughest battle that we have. Potentially the toughest battle that we will see in this tournament is Julio Jones versus DeAndre Hopkins. But to me, there is a clear winner here, and it is Julio. I mean, one of the best wide receivers to ever play. A guy that was a freak athlete. And really there as a route runner as well. If you don't appreciate Julio Jones, you can get the hell out of this chat. You can get the hell out of this live stream. Unsubscribe to the website, and you're not getting a refund. Julio Jones is a stud. All right, next one up here, Utah State. Debo Samuel here for South Carolina. Kevin Curtis, again, I appreciate your work on my fantasy team it, it, back in 2007. But this is where the magical run ends here for Kevin Curtis. We got to go Debo Samuel. That brings us up here. Round four. Let's go. Puka Nakua versus Julio Jones. I'm sorry to the Puka bros. I'm sorry for the Puka bros. This is where it ends. I'm not going to say that he's better than Julio Jones. Can't do it. Julio moves on to the, to the final here. I mean, this is it. Shout out to Puka. I mean, what an incredible run here from BYU and Puka Nakua. But you lose to Julio Jones. There's no shame in that. And, I mean, Mike Evans versus Debo Samuel. This is it. This is it. We got a guy in Debo who is one of the best yak weapons in the league. One of the best zone beaters in reception perception history. Totally understand that. Totally respect that. But Mike Evans is a dog. I mean, honestly, right now in this moment, I would say that Mike Evans is a better wide receiver than Debo Samuel. The chat says it's Mike Evans easy. I, I mean, maybe it's Mike Evans easy. I don't know. I'm trying to show Debo a little respect here. Guy's a great zone beater. I'm not going to say he's not a real wide receiver. That's disrespectful. Absolutely disrespectful. But Mike Evans, top-tier man coverage beater, top-tier press coverage beater, a true X receiver who wins in the vertical route game. We're giving it to Mike Evans. And here we have Julio Jones versus Mike Evans. This is what it's all about, man. This is what it's all about. And we're going, obviously, Julio Jones. I mean, give me a break. Oh, set the, set the final score. I don't know. I mean, 
yeah, obviously, I, I don't know. What's the final score? Who cares? I don't know, 69 to 69. What do I care? I don't know. What, are, what do college basketball games even typically end in anyways? You guys can tell me. I don't know. Who cares? All right, so that's it. That's my bracket. Alabama is your national champion. Shout out. Perfect stuff. Julio Jones deserves it. I mean, listen. Julio Jones deserves it, okay? This, th- he, he deserves what we're giving him here. He deserves this incredible honor to be the guy that brought Alabama to the NCAA tournament men's you know, basketball situation thing. March Madness, the whole thing. Julio Jones is that guy. We love to see it. Just for you sickos who have actually watched this, I will bring up uh, Julio Jones's reception perception success rates on the website. Uh, I'm, I'm pulling it up here as we speak. Because this guy, look, look at all those schools that Julio Jones beat out. I mean, it's a, honestly, it's good that we gave this to Puka back here, the, B, the BYU-UAB uh, matchup, because, look, we don't need former teammates matching up here. That's not what we want. Boom. Julio Jones. This is a reception perception stud. Look at some of these success rate versus man coverage scores. I mean, don't look at that 2021 20, season with the Titans. You can just don't look at that at the bottom there. <laughs> don't look at that. We, we we don't need to see that. Yeah, Julio Jones is a stud. He brings Alabama the national championship here. March Madness is over. You don't even need to watch the games, okay? You don't even need to watch the games. You can if you want to. You can have some fun, but you don't need to watch the games because I already told you Alabama is going to win. Shout out to the most accurate bracket of all time. It was absolutely uh, electric. If you guys have more questions, if you didn't, if I didn't get you in the chat, join the Discord. The link is in the description. Make sure you make a bracket. The link is in the description again to go on Yahoo and make your bracket. Do it, please. Have some fun. Compete for twenty k, twenty five k. Shoot. Come on, that would be awesome for you. Play with your buddies. Make a bracket on YahooSports.com. Make yourself happy. Make your March better. All right, that's it. That's the show. Hell of a time. Appreciate you all for coming out. This was great. Uh, f- dude, we, we, remembered some, we remembered some dudes. Guys remembered some dudes on this stream with some of these prospects. I mean, it was a real trip down memory lane. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you enjoyed finding out exactly how the NCAA men's tournament is going to play out. That's March Madness in the books. That's receiver madness in the books. I'm Matt Harmon. Like and subscribe. The whole thing. You know the deal. I'll see you around next time. Appreciate you for hanging out.